There is all the money that everybody needs and wants waiting there for them. And there's only one reason it's not in their lives, and that's because they're stopping it from coming into their life. Really? The message of The Secret is the message that I've been trying to share with the world on my show for the past 21 years. The legendary around the world. How are we stopping it? By thinking we don't have enough, by thinking we don't deserve it, being programmed the way you were, that my family didn't have very much, kind of born on the wrong side of the tracks kind of thing, or to believe that we only get money through our job. Law of Attraction can only do what you believe. We are unlimited beings. We limit ourselves down to nothing. What else about money do you feel like people are missing when it comes to manifesting and the law of attraction? Money is... Welcome everyone to today's episode. This is all about manifesting money. And we had the privilege of having Rhonda Byrne on, who's the creator of The Secret, which you're aware of, sold tens of millions of copies and really impacted millions of people around the world. And she's only done a couple of interviews in the last decade and so we had the opportunity to really get her in studio and dive deeper on the topics around manifestation and money and really what are the key blocks that hold people back from making and earning more and believing that they're deserving of making more and if this is exciting for you i want you to leave a comment below leave a yes leave a comment that is exciting for you because if it is, I would love to have Rhonda come back on and do more on this topic. So if you want more from her, leave a yes below and also make sure to subscribe so we can get more inspiring guests like Rhonda on this show. So I hope you enjoy this. Again, make sure to subscribe, leave a comment below and let's dive into this interview. This is fascinating and I think it's interesting to talk about this when it comes to money because a lot of people, money is at the top of their mind. I feel like health, yeah love and money Absolutely. is what they think about and money is something that people want to attract and manifest more of it's one of the biggest yeah. problems of divorce it's one of the biggest pains for people is not feeling like they have enough or maybe they haven't navigated their spending habits correctly and they're overspending on things they don't need to spend on whatever the reason is and i read this card where again we're talking about the manifestation cards it, and if you haven't already bought this while you're listening or watching this, go buy it right now. These cards are a game changer. I love how powerful these are. This card is amazing. It says, money doesn't bring happiness, but happiness brings money. And it's such a simple concept that a lot of people don't apply to their life. And there is evidence in the physical real world and science that backs this. There's different research studies that talk about when waiters or people in the service industry are happy. When someone is carrying your luggage, someone at, you know who is bringing you food, someone who's your waiter, and they are joyful, smiling, and bringing joy yeah. to your life. They're happy, they get tipped more. It is, it oh, happens. Yeah, of course. You're gonna get bigger tips when you're kind, happy, and joyful. It happens. If you are negative and mean and late and, and slow and frustrated, wow. the customer will not reward you by treating them poor. Oh my God, that is a brilliant example. I have never thought of that, but it's that true. is it's it's a, I brilliant. Mean, you, you see this and you see yeah. this, you want to pay people more. You want to give people, I want to give people yeah. more. When I'm going to the coffee shop and someone's just smiling, how's your day? I hope yeah. you have a great day. I want to give more. And you know what's making you want to give more? What? Law of attraction. Mm. It's making you want to give more. So money doesn't bring happiness, but happiness brings money. And if you and this is the rest of the card. Again, I want everyone to go buy this because these cards are incredible, but this is the rest of the card. If you keep thinking that you need money then you will keep attracting needing money. You have to find a way of being happy now, of feeling good now, of being in joy now without the money because those great feelings are what attracts money. And this is a game changer when it comes to money because yeah. I didn't feel like I had skills in order to make money. I didn't think I had a a hireable opportunity because I didn't feel smart from school. So I had a program and a belief. Yeah. Who's going to hire me? How could I ever make any money? What? I don't have any skills that could make money. That was the belief, the program. Yep. 
And then I just started saying, I'm going to be happy and let that energy spread to whoever is around me. Yeah, yeah. And money started to come my way. And it is a game changer. People want to reward you. They want to pay you. They want to give you more when you are happy. Yeah, and they want to help you too. They right? want you to win. Yeah. They want you to succeed because you're bringing something into their life that they want more of. Mm -hmm. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I love this about money. What else about money do you feel like people are missing when it comes to manifesting and the law of attraction? One of the reasons people want money, and you know they, uh, they say money isn't spiritual, there isn't anything that's not spiritual. You know, everything's spiritual. And, uh, um, but money is, people think they don't deserve it. Like, for, for example, there is all the money that everybody needs and wants waiting there for them. And there's only one reason it's not in their lives, and that's because they're stopping it from coming into their lives. Really? Oh, yeah. How are we stopping it? By thinking we don't have enough. Right. <laughs> by thinking we don't have enough, by thinking we don't deserve it, mm. by maybe being programmed the way you were, that mm -hmm. my family didn't have very much, you know, I'm destined to not have very much, kind of born on the wrong side of the tracks kind of thing, or... Uh, all of those thoughts, to believe that we only get money through our job. If you believe that that's the only way you're going to get money, that's the only way that you're going to get money. But you can get money from unbelievable, unlimited yes. different ways. Yes. And so you start to open up your mind that money can come from anywhere, everywhere, right? And that so money can come into your life. So straight away you open up because law of attraction can only do what you believe. And so if you believe you only get money from your job, you see what we do? We are unlimited beings and we limit ourselves mm. down to nothing. Down to, we are unlimited, unlimited. The world and all of its riches and joys is all of ours. And so, but we, through our beliefs, you know, for this reason, I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it because I didn't work hard enough. I need to work harder mm -hmm. to get this, you know, I, or I need to suffer. You know, I know that people, you know, have money, they had to suffer. So we have all of these limitations that we impose on this unlimited being mm. that we are. Yes. <laughs> Why does it seem like money is one of the hardest things to break through when it comes to believing we are deserving of money because and believing that it comes to us effortlessly? Why does it seem like it's so challenging for a lot of the world? I think I think it is to do with our deservability that we, I just think that's ingrown into us that, um, what about all the things you don't? Money doesn't grow on trees, you know. We, you know, we. I can't afford it. I mean, I can I came from a really humble background. My parents could not afford. You know, we had secondhand clothes, so I had a whole lot of lack fed to me um, just by my day to day living as a, as a child and growing up. I didn't ever feel that, but I certainly grew up with lack because I knew. When I discovered the secret, I had to turn my mindset from lack mm. to a wealth mindset to an abundance mindset. And so I set about to do that. To, and that's why I know anyone can do it because I did it. What was and that process for you of turning it from lack into abundance? It was all affirmations. It was all I played affirmations, gratitude, being grateful for everything I had, affirmations to to talk about the, you know, what, that, um, that I'm wealthy already, you know, affirming that I have plenty of money, that um, I attract whatever I need and, you know, I'm, 
I'm a success with everything I touch and, you know, mm. all those all those kinds of affirmations. So I did those. I did gratitude. And anything that gave me a bad feeling around money, I reversed it. And one of those things was paying bills. Why? Because you never have enough money to pay right, the bills, right. right? So how did you reverse that? When I bills would come your way, what were you I doing? I pretended they were checks. When it was a bill? And so how, what would you think and feel so, uh, when you see it? So back then, I would open the mail. Right. When it was like all these window-faced envelopes. <laughs> and I would open the mail and like, oh my gosh, I didn't have any way to pay all of these bills. It was like a dread feeling. Oh, horrible. My stomach would just rock to my knees. So for everybody, I have been there. I have done it. I know how you feel if you're struggling with money. And I can tell you, you don't have to live your life like that. You really don't. Um and so I would just, I played games because law of attraction doesn't know if you're imagining something or if it's real. Doesn't know. Doesn't care. <laughs> doesn't have an opinion. Doesn't have an opinion <laughs> at all. And so I would play these games where I would open it up. I would, and it, you know, and maybe it was like $1,200 or something. And I would be like, whoa. You'd be <laughs> excited. Would, oh, yeah. I'd be excited. Oh, $1,200. And I would write it down and I'd tally up the amounts of money that I got for that day. And it got to a point where I didn't feel I was getting enough, like it wasn't a tally. Come so on. I would add zeros. Come on. So the $1,200, I would turn into 12000 and then I would add zeros and then I would say, yes, $150,000 is mine today, you know. And so <laughs> yeah, I would but it was do, really bills. Yeah, they were really bills. A, oh, my goodness. And so I would play that game so I would feel better and then I would pay <laughs> what I could. But do you know when I paid, I would do something else. I played another game. Tell me. When I paid, I would imagine that this money – is not a bill, but I'm donating to the company. I'm making a donation because this company has been really great in supplying me with electricity. And so I'm making a donation and this money is going to help all of the people educate their children. Wow. It's going to help them buy food this week. Mm. It's going to pay their mortgage. So I would think about all of the employees that and the difference this money would make by giving this money. And so that would cause all the resistance to go away, wow. right? At a total meltdown. And that's how I that was how I did it. So I took the circumstances where I didn't feel good about money. Now, back then we got bank statements. They were not pretty, right? But I changed that around. Really? Just with a bit of marker. <laughs> <laughs> Right. I was just put, and I had credit cards because I, I, in making the secret, I kept borrowing on the credit cards to make the documentary. They were at the max, at the max, and I had two credit cards, and they were at the absolute max for amounts of money that was inconceivable to me. Right, and that I had no, absolutely no way, <laughs> no way of paying it off. Yeah, no, but, um, but what I did was I just. Uh, yeah, added, I just pretended that when I got the statements, I would just pretend that I had, you know what I did? I did zero, 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 zero. And then I put thank you over the bill. And now I have zero, 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 zero on my credit cards. Wow. But to this day, to this day, if I have a, a, a written bill or something like as somebody comes to do a service at the house and I write them a check, and across that bill, I would write, thank you, paid, because that is what I did with every bill I couldn't pay. I put, thank you, paid. Wow. And to this day, I still write, thank you, paid. Wow. I know. Now, for people that are watching or listening and <laughs> thinking, this is a beautiful, you know, thing to try and to do, but if they still have to pay the bills and they're like, well... How far can I take this until I'm like the money is, you know, stacking up or the bills are stacking up where I'm like, I don't go back into overwhelm or stress that yeah. I haven't paid off these bills. You have to pay what you can. Like okay. what I did was 
I I would play that game and then I would pay what I could. Yes. And I think even these days, companies are a lot more understanding than they were back then, you know, and they would say, if you ring us, we'll work out a payment plan right. with you and whatever. But I did pay those bills. I would pay the most urgent ones, like electricity, because I didn't yeah, want that to be cut yes. off, right? And so, yeah, you, you do pay them. Um, but I would just do things to feel better about money. I, and I think that is the thing I want people to take away from this story is the the play nature that you had with it. Yeah. Where there's a lot of stress and overwhelm around money for so many people. Yeah. But you, which was the same for you for a long time until yeah. you started to play. I did. I played all the time. And non-stop. that is a huge key to huge. the secret is being in a playful, energetic state, right? Yeah, yeah. Like I did this list of desires. I I I had all these credit cards they held. I overdrafted my company. I had mortgaged my mortgage my home to the hilt, all like just making the documentary. And I wrote out this desire list of all of the desires that I wanted and all of the things. It looked like I looked like a mad woman. Right? Like I'm writing, you know, the car that I wanted and the house that I wanted overlooking the ocean and all of these different things. Absolutely every one of those things on that list manifested. And that's something else too that it I It all think manifested. Everyone. A desires list. Is there a specific way, sorry to interrupt you there, but is there a specific yes. way to create a desires list yeah. so that they all manifest? Easy. Just write down the things you really, really, really want. And there's the, do you need to have a reason why you want them or is it? Law of Attraction doesn't care what your reason is. Doesn't care. Is there a way to write it down of saying, I desire, or no. I want this or just. I, I just did a list. I just did this list and I would keep adding to it. But I did a top 10 and I got everything on the list. And the last thing on the list was to go to Bora Bora in Tahiti. And you went? Yeah, to stay in one of those things on the water, you know, one of the huts on the water. And I'd all, always wanted to go there. And uh, and you got a small plane, you know, light plane to go there. And I can't remember if I was going or if I was returning. No, I was going. And the plane stopped. It, it, I thought it was an unscheduled stop. It, but anyway, it stopped. I think I was the only person in the plane. And it filled with Tahitians, and they were incredible. Suddenly the plane just became alive and they were laughing and talking. There were all these workers and they're laughing and talking. And I just sat there and I just had tears wow. of the beauty of them and the happiness from them. And then I realized this was the last desire on my list. Mm. And I'm in this plane with all of these people, so happy, so joyful, saying, this is the way to live your life. Be happy. Because do you know, we will find a million excuses not to be happy. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll be happy when, I'll be, ha I'll be happy when I have more money. Be happy when I feel better. Be happy when I get that job. Be happy when I meet someone I'm not on my own anymore. <laughs> and you have to be happy before. I know. Yeah. You were just talking about joy and how much joy you had in that plane with those individuals there. Again, we're talking about the secret manifestation cards. Make sure you get a few of these decks and give them to friends. This one is about jumping for joy. It says, jump from joy. You can lift your frequency accelerate manifestation and change your whole life with this powerful visualization technique that can be done in less than 30 seconds. Imagine that you just received your desire and see yourself jumping for joy. Yeah. And so I love this idea of writing down your desire list, whether it's five or 10 things that you really desire. Yeah. Imagine that you just received this and see yourself jumping for joy. Yeah. It's a beautiful way where, again, I'm hearing you say the law of attraction is about the, what you're thinking about and desiring and how you're feeling around that experience. It's not, I want this, but I don't feel good about it because I don't have it now. It's thinking the desire and feeling the joy and excitement and being happy now Yeah, is the key. It is the key.
Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It's just, and that is what, that is what I did. That visualization is what I did. Yes. I would imagine myself jumping for joy. I would just close my, and even I can see the movie of that, even with my eyes open because I've done it so many times and just jumping for joy that down to the smallest things, like you go and have a, you know, a test at the doctor's, like, what do you want? Like, if, if you're going to go and have a test at the doctor's and somebody says to you, oh, how did the test, I've done this with people, oh, how did you go with the test? I don't know yet until it comes back. Oh. Mm, oh, then it could be anything. Right. You've got to say what it is. You've got to decide what it is. You've got to, down to the smallest things in life, right? Everything, everything we have to intend and say. We have to choose it. We've got to declare. Mm. We are an unlimited being. Mm. Don't limit ourselves and say, I don't know yet. Because when people say that to me, I'm like, what do you want it to be? Well, I don't know until I get the results. No, what do you want it to be? <laughs> All clear, right? Like before right. I go to the dentist, right. I always say before I go to the dentist, fabulous. Right. All good. All good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and going back to the desire around money, I wanted to add one more card in here and then I have a couple final questions because I could, I could speak to you for hours, Rhonda. This is amazing, but I want to be respectful of time here. Um, when it comes to money, mm. you have this incredible card, again, in, in your manifestation deck, which is, says, prosperity is your birthright. And here are four simple rules to manifest money. Number one, each day, think more thoughts of abundance than thoughts of lack of money. Number two, be happy now without the money, which is probably one of the hardest things for people when they feel like they're yeah. stressed not yeah. with money. Yeah. Be happy now without the money. Number three, be truly grateful for everything you have now. Not frustrated for what you're lacking, but be grateful right. for what you have now. And four, give the best of yourself to others. This is huge. And I'm so glad you have that in here because oh. a lot of us hold back the best of ourselves from our, to ourselves and to yeah. others. Why do we... Why do we live in scarcity of our gifts to other people to see those gifts fully? I just think it's the nature of the ego. Mm. You know, the ego's second name is lack. Mm. I am ego, lack, and fear. <laughs> there, there it's kind of middle names. And, and so the ego is lack because it is completely lackful. And, and it's also incredibly fearful. And so... And so that is what is sending out all of the self-talk to us. So we have to be careful of what we listen to. Yes. You know, because that voice that you have in your head, that really, that is not you. And I know you think it's you because you think it sounds like you, that voice, the, the thoughts, but it is not you. These are just thoughts floating by. So don't empower those thoughts don't mm -hmm. you know don't give those don't believe any of those thoughts because the, all of those thoughts are an absolute lie you are an unlimited being yes you are not lacking in any way whatsoever as you know you felt that you were lacking but you now know you're not lacking right, right? Mm -hmm. that was not true right not true at all mm -hmm. So, yeah, just the, it's just the nature of the ego. So I would just say, please don't believe any negative thoughts about yourself because they're not true. You, people are so much more than they realize. It just, oh, I get really choked up yeah. when I, when, you know, people are just so magnificent and so brave and courageous to do this journey of being human. You know, it's just, and all of the obstacles and the difficulties that people face and, um, yeah, but magnificence is what we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And something came to me as you were saying about this, you know, my father used to turn the 
mute the commercials when any type of medication uh, or sickness commercials would come so on. Quick. So whenever we're watching a sports game and commercials would come on, he would always mute it or he'd turn the channel because he didn't want that program of sickness, disease, medication constantly running in my mind and our in my siblings' minds. And I really thank him for that because we start to believe lies that are out there, even though it's not the truth, Yeah. right? But if we start to believe it, it becomes true for us. Yeah. And it's with anything, whether we're seeing other people gossiping or talking about negative things that mm -hmm. don't serve the moment. So it's turning the channel, it's changing the conversation, it's switching our thoughts, it's removing ourselves from the situation. We need to be Absolutely. standing guard to our mind and our thoughts. Yeah, no, very well put. Yes. It's exactly what we need to do. And not subject ourselves to. That's really one. I mean, I mute too. <laughs> you do? Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't uh, and, you know, the news is just, you know, who who wants to who wants to partake of any of that? And, you know, I know I'll hear about anything that's... You'll be informed. I will. I'll be informed. Be, you don't need to be entertained with fear. Exactly. But you can be informed with information. That's right. Exactly. Without the, uh, the, the feelings of fear and scarcity. Yeah, and, because and that only makes things worse, you know, and then brings it into your life. I think in, um, in, the, in the Bible in Job is is this simple little line, what I feared the most came upon me. Mm. There's law of attraction. It is, yes, yes. <laughs> right? That is uh, true. We're so it's not worth being afraid. You know, it, re it really isn't. And, and, and fear, you know, all of the emotions and all of the thoughts are coming from the mind. And the mind is just a program and you can change the program. And it just takes a little bit. It just takes a little bit of putting in the good thoughts and the positive thoughts. And, and as you put in the good thoughts and the positive thoughts, then you feel, then you begin to feel better and you're like, you're feeling happier and then you're on a roll. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I hope you guys have enjoyed this so far. I really love diving into this topic around manifestation and money with Rhonda Byrne. And again, if you've enjoyed this, leave a comment, leave a yes in the comments. Make sure to subscribe if you want more from Rhonda and other of the top leaders in the world to talk about these topics around manifestation and money. Again, leave your comments below because I wanted to share my reflection on this entire conversation. I wanted to share the things I've learned over the last 15 years in business and being in this world of over 1500 episodes with some of the biggest leaders in the world, but also some of the wealthiest individuals in the world that I've learned some of their lessons and keys about how to gain wealth. I've learned from some of the top athletes and musicians and artists about how to visualize and manifest the things you want in your life. So I wanted to bring these two together and really break down the topics that Rhonda talked about here and how she created the secret. Again, this was a phenomenon that took over the world. The book that she wrote, she created one piece of content. It was a book. She learned some ideas, she applied it, and she wrote about it. She was able to package it in a certain way to add so much value to tens of millions of people around the world. That book turned into other things. There was a documentary. There was a movie that came out eventually. There was more things that came from that. Many other books that she's written, these manifestation cards, all these different things that have come from taking action on one idea. One thing that she was called to create, that she said, how can I add value to one person? How can I contribute to other people and help their lives be better? And I want you to think about that as I reflect on these six keys to manifesting more, to manifesting abundance from Rhonda Byrne and really kind of the blocks that hold a lot of us back, things that held me back for many years growing up as well because I didn't understand money. I was afraid of it, I was scared of it. Uh, you know, I didn't know what to do with it. When I got it, I was just like, ah, what do I do with this money and how do I manage it? How do I protect it? How do I grow it? How do I invest it? How do I pay taxes on it? I didn't know any of this stuff, it scared me. And that fear crippled me, it held me back. Luckily enough, I was able to find enough guidance and mentors, and I had to learn how to make money because I was living on my sister's couch, as many of you know. I was living on her couch for a year and a half, not making any money, not able to contribute to pay rent. I wasn't buying food. I was just kind of being a mooch for a year and a half living off my sister. And I struggled with that. 
I struggled with it because I didn't feel valuable. I didn't feel I was, I felt a little guilty because I was just taking, I wasn't contributing. And it wasn't until I started to shift that, I started to shift this taking, this victim mentality, this uh, someone rescue me and someone help me. You know, there was a season in my life where I needed that. I had an injury, I broke my wrist, I was in a full arm cast, I was recovering from a surgery. There was a season of time where I needed someone to help me recover. But that season played its course and I stayed in that season way too long. The best gift my sister gave me was kicking me out. Now she did it in a loving way, she wasn't mean. She just said, hey, I think you need to either start paying rent or you need to find a different place to stay. And it was exactly what I needed because I was living in this taking mentality and this lack of contribution mentality. And that wasn't allowing me to manifest more or to earn or make more. So I wanna talk about these six keys. And again, share with me in the comments below the key that resonates with you the most or talk about anything that comes up for you, leave a comment below on how this has impacted your life or if you're struggling with any of these areas in your life right now as well. The first thing is happiness. Rhonda talked about happiness and I wanna start with this quote. This is from one of the manifestation cards. It says, money doesn't bring happiness, but happiness brings money. If you keep thinking that you need money, you'll keep attracting needing money. And there's this story that I've talked about before where I was, I was really struggling with, with not having any money and a feeling like, man, I'm, I'm worthless. I, uh, you know, I'm no good. I don't have any skills. How can I make money? Who's going to give me money? I don't understand this. And I remember I wasn't in a happy place. I was more in a depressed place when I first lived on my sister's couch. I was in this kind of mood all the time. I was frustrated. I lost my dream of playing football because of this injury and the surgery that I had. I, I was in denial. I thought I was going to be able to recover and go back, but that never happened. So I was just kind of in this mood, this, this low energy state. And being in that low energy state, I was on the couch. I was watching TV for the first few months and I wasn't doing anything for myself or for others. I was living in pity. I was living in lack. I was living in sadness and frustration and disappointment, loss, grief, all these different low level energy qualities. I was being them. And because of that state of being, I was attracting more of this needing money, needing help, needing sympathy, needing other people to uh, support me in my victim situation of what has happened to me and the struggle that I'm facing. It was a lot of me, 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 me. It was self. Look at self. And that will only get you so far. It will get you some attention. It will get you some validation. It will get you some sympathy. You might even get people helping you and paying for you, which is what my sister did for me. Uh, and that's all good for a season when you really need it. But eventually we've got to graduate from that season. We've got to transform that pain, depression, sadness, lack of motivation into something that we're called to be, into what our higher selves want us to be. So there started to become little sparks of inspiration. Uh, three months after my surgery was Christmas time. I got a gift. Someone handed me a book. It wasn't my book, but it was the book I needed to read at that time. Someone handed me a book. My brother, it was the only Christmas gift I got the entire Christmas was one book. We did the whole kind of secret Santa thing where we just kind of give each person one gift. He handed me a book. He didn't even wrap it in a present. He put it in a, a plastic bag and just handed it to me. He said, hey, Merry Christmas. And uh, this book was that spark of inspiration. It was the four hour work week and it got me going down a path of ways to earn more money. It got me researching online marketing. It got me learning about social media and advertising, all these different things that I really wasn't aware of before. And it got me curious. That curious gave me a call to action. It gave me energy and said, let me research, let me discover, let me try, let me learn. And that was really the thing that started to get me out because it gave me some joy. It gave me some hope, some inspiration, and it gave me a purpose every day to explore and learn something. And that was one spark. I started doing other sparks, which I'll talk about on the, these other five keys. 
but happiness is a big one to start with. And a lot of people say, well, how can I be happy if I'm broke? How can I be happy if I'm not getting the opportunities I want, or if I'm getting rejected from all these interviews for a career that I want, or if no one wants to be in a relationship with me, or if I keep attracting the wrong person and I keep getting hurt, how can I be happy? I'll be happy when I get the thing I need, when I have money in my bank account, when I'm in a better relationship. And that's the wrong way to go about it. If you've learned anything from this show, uh, or if this is your first time here, and, and you know anything about emotional intelligence, you know that you can't have and then be. You must be, then take actions from a state of being, from a state of joy, abundance, happiness, feeling gratitude. When you are being positive, when you have a great attitude and you're being playful and you're being happy, then you take action from that state of joy. When you take action from that state of joy, then you have the results based on those first two things. So we cannot have money and then be happy. It doesn't work like that. You still have to learn how to be joyful, take action from a joyful state, and then have, you'll receive the rewards at, those, at the end of that season. So that's something to think about. Happiness, again, money doesn't bring happiness, but happiness brings money. Now, it creates a portal, it creates a door that opens new ways of seeing things, new ways of allowing opportunities, synchronicities, possibilities to flow in your direction. But when we close our energetic state, our energetic field to inward of depression, sadness, lack, less than, not enough, undeserving, all these different things, we are in a state of clenched, tight, frustration. That does not allow money to flow to you. That does not allow opportunities and people to say, hey, let me think about this person who's in a good state that I want to help out. We've got to shift our state of being from frustrated, victim, sad, depressed into joyful and happiness. We always want to be around joyful, loving, happy people. The thing that sucks the energy out of the room the most is when someone is negative and depressed. Maybe for a moment or a period of time, we can be there and empower them and encourage them. But if someone is being that for months and years, it just sucks the life out of you. So again, money will not flow to that individual. If it does flow to them, they still have to learn how to be happy. Because there's some people that I've met who have a lot of money, but they're unhappy. And that's another problem they've got to face. But money will flow to you if you learn to be happier as a human being. So start bringing joy, start creating positive energy around others, and you'll start to attract more money for yourself. Let me know in the comments if this resonates with you, if this has happened for you, that you've shifted your energy into a positive state, into joy, into kindness, and you've started to receive more because of that. Maybe you have a specific story you wanna share in the comments below. The second thing, the second key to manifesting more financial abundance and to eliminating this block uh, that we talked about in this interview was feeling deserving, feeling like you deserve. Here's a great quote by Oprah Winfrey. She said, there's a difference between thinking you deserve to be happy and knowing that you are worthy of being happy. You being alive makes worthiness your birthright you alone are enough. Now, I know that might be challenging to fully own and accept as your birthright is worthiness, especially when you've gone through traumas as a child, especially when you've gone through heartache and breakup and people have lied to you and manipulated you and people have tried to control you and people have stolen from you and you know, picked on you and made fun of you and you felt less than, you felt bottom of the class, you felt all these things, it's hard to feel worthy. It's really challenging. So I completely understand because I never felt worthy as a kid. I always, I felt all those things I just listed. It's very challenging to believe because I'm alive, I am worthy. Most of my um, elementary school days, I thought about why am I alive I wish I were dead. So I had this kind of script in my mind like, I am worthless. I am nothing. 
Um, you know, I had all these kind of psychological traumas that were making me think that I was not good enough. From kids picking on me to being bottom of the class, to all these different things where I was just like, no one likes me, no one loves me, no one cares about me. Now that wasn't true. My parents loved me, liked me, my sisters liked me. Sometimes, you know, sometimes I was a pain, but they liked me most of the time. Uh, and people cared about me, but it was the story I was telling myself. It was what I was believing was true, even though it wasn't the actual truth. It's what I repeated on, uh, you know, a script in my mind. And it took a long time to feel deserving. So if you're in a state right now where you don't believe you deserve love, you don't believe you deserve, you know, more money or a better alignment within your career or a great partnership or good friends who treat you well, I'm telling you, I've been there before. It's not fun, but you are deserving of healthy relationships. You're deserving of a healthy relationship with self. You're deserving of abundance but you've got to be willing to be extremely grateful, appreciative, and generous in order for yourself to fully feel deserving as well. And so the three keys to feeling worthy, the first one I would say is something that I did in my 20s, which was I wrote down my fears, my biggest fears and insecurities that made me feel less and lack. I wrote them down, I created a fear list I talk about this in The Greatness Mindset. If you don't have a copy yet, I highly encourage you to pick up a copy. We'll have it linked up in the description so you can grab a copy on Audible or, or Amazon or your local bookstore. In this, I talk about all the processes for developing more self-belief, healing the past, and all these different exercises that have guided me over the years. One of the first ones in my early 20s was creating a fear list, writing the things down that made me feel the most insecure, the most uh, undeserving, um, the least intelligent, the thing that made me feel afraid beyond anything psychologically and socially. I wrote those down and I just made a commitment to take action on them consistently. Public speaking was a big one of mine, so I went every week for a year and took public speaking classes in Toastmasters. Uh, learning to dance was another one. So I said, what's the scariest form of dance? Well, I felt like partner dancing, salsa dancing, with a language, with music, and a culture that I was completely foreign to. Let me go into the hardest thing. It was terrifying. I went to a dance, I went to Salsa Club every single Tuesday night for three months, and I stood in the corner. I stood in the corner trembling, watching all these uh, individuals salsa dancing with a live salsa band that I was just so out of place. Where right? I was just like, who am I, this you know, tall athlete guy here, acting like I want to learn salsa. And for three months, every single week, I would just go and watch. I never had the courage to step foot on the dance floor until eventually some girl dragged me on the dance floor that I got to know over those few months, dragged me out there. I embarrassed myself and humiliated myself by trying to dance and stepping on her feet and just stumbling and bumping into people. And I was sweating. I was so embarrassed and humiliated and after about three minutes of me messing up and feeling like everyone was laughing at me, the girl I'm dancing with says, Lewis, look up, because I was looking down the whole time. She said, look up, look at me. So I looked her in the eyes and she goes, look around you. And as I'm like, stop and look around sweating, you know, I'm just like terrified, shaking. She's like, Lewis, no one cares that you're messing up. No one was watching me. No one was pointing their finger at me. No one was laughing at me. No one was saying, what, do, what does this guy think he's doing? No one. They were all dancing and having fun. They were just enjoying the moment. Now, maybe someone over there was like, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's doing, but that's normal. You know, you might have a couple of people that are like, oh, what do you think you're doing? What is this? But then they go back to their own lives. They go back to what they're doing. And so no one was pointing their finger at me. No one was laughing at me. No one was telling me, get off this dance floor. You suck. None of that happened. It was all in my imagination. And it would cripple me for months where I would go there and watch and be terrified to get out there again. So I, I started writing down these fears and then I acted on them. And once I started acting on them, I knew I needed to be consistent with them. So I acted on them every single week. Weekly, I showed up to public speaking. Weekly, I was doing salsa dancing. Weekly, I was practicing guitar because I really wanted to learn 
a musical instrument as well. So I was practicing guitar, things that I was not good at. And I started doing more of these things weekly. I was studying online marketing, all these different things I was doing that I didn't have courage or confidence with yet. So number one in key in feeling worthy is to write down a list of your fears and start acting on them. We give the entire kind of exercise and, and roadmap on how to do this in the greatness mindset. So make sure you grab a copy for that. The second key to feeling more worthy, more deserving is keeping your word and your commitments to yourself. If you want to feel like a fraud, if you want to feel like insignificant, if you want to feel out of integrity, make a big commitment to yourself or a little one and break it over and over again. Your body, your nervous system, your heart and your mind will connect and say, you're a liar. You're a fraud. You, you keep speaking a big game. You keep saying you're going to do this, but you're not doing it. We don't believe in you. Your own body is going to not believe in who you are. So it's going to feel not deserving when you constantly break your commitments in your word to yourself. Now, we're human beings. You're, you're going to break your, your commitments to yourself at some point. You're not going to be 100% your word every single day. But the goal would, for, for you to be would be what I say I'm going to commit to, I'm going to do it. So if you don't think you can take on some big commitment, don't write it down. Don't commit to it. Don't say you're going to do it and then break your word. Don't do that to yourself and don't, don't do that to other people. Like commit to what you can commit to and do it consistently. This show at the time of this launching is right around 11 years uh, for the School of Greatness show. And that is 11 years of showing up every single week for 11 years and creating an episode of service, of value, of some type of content to help others with something. That's been 11 years of consistency. I made a commitment to myself when I started to do it once a week, every week. That has expanded to three times a week now, and it has continued to grow into other areas of life. But that commitment, I have a stack of evidence of things I've done and been committed to for myself. Now, was I my best every week? No. Was I, uh, you know, always on time for my interviews? No. Did I always prepare at the highest level? No, I wasn't like perfect in the last 11 years every time I did this, but I was consistent. I was my word. I was giving my best. And you can always improve and always get better. But that's one thing we can think about is, can I be my word to myself and to other people? Be my commitments. You will feel worthy when you do step two of that. And the third thing, this is a big one, um, I just think when you're, when you're a taker and you want to only take from others, you meet someone, you ask them for help. Um, someone does something good for you and you just take it and you never return the favor, whether it's to them or just generously to other human beings. I feel like you're eventually not going to feel you're deserving because people are going to notice that over time and they're going to stop wanting to give to you. They're going to say, oh, this person's a taker. They're only out for themselves. They're not in a win-win collaboration environment. They're really about just them succeeding and not helping others. When you live in generosity, you're opening again a portal. You're contributing what you have in your mind and your heart. You're saying, I'm going to share this, whether it's a generous smile, whether it's a generous or curious question you ask someone, uh, whether it's just being a listening individual and being there, being present for someone, those are all generous acts of being, right? Things you can give to someone. Or if you're physically giving someone a gift or you're donating money or you're donating time to something that you care about, that is being generous. How you react and respond to someone, that is being generous. All these different ways that you can be generous. It doesn't have to look a certain way. So I want you to think about, number one, writing down and acting on your fears until your fears disappear. Number two, keeping your word to yourself and your commitments to self and others. And number three, being a generous human being. This doesn't mean you have to give all your money away and live in poverty or something like that, but thinking how can I just be generous through my way of being every day? 
When someone walks by me, how can I be present and smile for a moment? How can I have a good interaction with someone? How can I leave someone better than when I found them? Again, I'm not expecting you to be Mother Teresa 24 seven and be like this perfect human being and always on. That's not practical, but doing your best and having this in consideration, I believe will support you in feeling more generous. So number two is feeling deserving. Number three key to unlocking more money manifestation. We talked about playing games. You know, I love that Rhonda's talked about this. I love it because I feel like I'm just, you know, a kid at heart. I love to play games. I would play all day if I could. Um, and in fact, playing, being playful, I feel like it was what allowed a lot of the success for the School of Greatness to happen and to continue to grow after 11 years. When I'm interacting with people, I'm usually playful. I try to joke a little bit or just have fun or just lighten the mood and connect with people and, and just be silly and goofy or whatever it might be. And I feel like that allows people to feel more connected and more generous and wanting to support as well. Um, here's a quote that, that I love that I think really resonates with this topic of playing games and having a playful attitude and a playful energy specifically around money. This is from Alan Watts who said, this is the real secret of life to be completely engaged with what you are doing in the here and now. And instead of calling it work, realize it is play. Now, Rhonda in this interview talked about the game she played with her, her, her money, her bills, right? Imagining that they were checks. And what if I added on this, you know, one zero, I added three more zeros or five more zeros. And what if I imagined and was playful with this? What if I was creating something in my mind and, and really, you know, able to manifest this one day. And I really liked that. You know, she talked about all this, all these things you can do by just imagining things, just like writing it down. I'm going to be playful and write down numbers and whatever it might be around money. You know, I, I remember hearing this story about Jim Carrey. I think he talked about this in an interview with Oprah, actually, where he said he would drive up Mulholland Boulevard here in Los Angeles every day when he was broke, just doing stand-up comedy for free, essentially. And he would drive up there and he would imagine himself, you know, winning awards and imagine himself on movies and just be playful with it. And he would, he wrote a check to himself, for $10 million for services rendered. And he put a date. And I remember him, he put a date and he signed this check to himself and he put it in his wallet. He was just being playful. He was imagining, he was dreaming. He was having fun with it. And they said five years later, when that date came, he got a movie for $10 million. And uh, I think it's just, you know, is it a coincidence? Is it a serendipity? Is it uh, synchronicity? Is it the power of play around money? Is it the power of dreaming and imagining characters in your mind and checks coming to you? Is this all fluff and all woo woo and all, you know, no substance? Or is there power and magic to this as well? Now, Jim Carrey took action for those five years. He busted his butt. He acted in accordance to the playful dreams as well. He didn't just imagine it and it came to him. He acted. He showed up consistently. He said yes to opportunities. He was courageous. He did all these different things that allowed the opportunity to flow back to him. He was giving. He was feeling deserving through his playfulness as well, which I think is really cool. He, you, if you don't feel deserving, you're not going to write a check for yourself for $10 million or a hundred thousand dollars or $1,000, whatever. You're going to feel like you deserve nothing, but he was playful in his deservedness as well. And I think that's really cool. You know, one of the things that I started to do, uh, in my twenties was I started to see money everywhere. I said, I'm going to play a game with myself every day. I'm going to try to find money and I'm not going to go home until I find money. And I'm going to walk around the streets and I'd find a penny or a quarter. Uh, sometimes a dollar and I'd be like, okay, cool. And I made it a mission. It was a game. How can I go find money today? How can I go get someone to give me a quarter? I would ask people for money. If I couldn't get, find money on the streets, I'd be like, Hey, do you have a, a, a 50 cents or a quarter or a dollar I can bum off of you? And I would just like ask people for money and people would give it to me. Sure. You want a quarter? Here you go. I would go to, you know, get coffee and say, Hey, you know, I'm a dollar short. Can you give me money or can you give me a discount? I would just play these games and see what's possible. 
And not every day it worked, but a lot of the times it did. And I remember one day, I kid you not, I walked out of my apartment and I found $100 on the street, just about a block away from my apartment. And I don't think I would have found that money had I not been in a playful game mentality where I was just like, let's go find some money today. And I was looking down and I literally saw it right in the corner by this little planter. And I go, is this, I was kind of in shock. Like, is this a hundred dollars? And I later picked it up and I was kind of, you know the time when you see money on the ground and you feel like, uh, am I supposed to take this? <laughs> when I was looking around, I was going in the shops. I was like, did anyone lose this? Because I really didn't want to take it if someone was right there and they just dropped it on accident. But no one lost the money um, that was in that area. And I was just like, well, someone's going to pick this up. Here we go. So hundred bucks in my pocket because I was in that playful mentality, right? Now, hopefully that, that'd be great if you found that every day, right? But if you are in a playful state, you'll create that. You'll create more of that financial abundance for yourself when you're in that playful state. So again, playing games, having a playful attitude, uh, and a playful energy around money. A lot of times we get so stressed around money, right? Where there's this conversation that is hush hush. I don't know if you grew up talking about money openly or if your parents spoke about it in a positive light or if it was more spoken about from money doesn't grow on trees, we don't have enough money, don't spend that, we need coupons. I remember uh, every week my dad and my mom cutting out coupons every single day for groceries, for whatever it might be, and always looking for discounts. It was like cutting coupons, we take this to the grocery store, you try to save as much money as possible. Now I'm all for you know, getting a good deal and saving money and not just blowing it, but there was definitely a, a feeling of like, we don't have enough right now, right? We don't have enough. And I never felt comfortable talking about money. I was always afraid of it because I didn't understand it. And so if you've ever had that fear of talking about it? Have you been comfortable sharing with your intimate partner how much money you make or how much debt you have or how much you have in savings? Do you have those conversations or are you a little more closed off and rigid around it because you're tense around it? Start to learn to loosen up. Start to learn to have more playful energy around it and not take it so seriously because the more serious and tight you are, the less it will flow to you. You're creating an energetic block when you have that tightness and locked energy around the conversation and playfulness around money. So again, leave a comment below. If you play games around money, if you have a light energy, or if you've had a tight energy around money before, and it hurts you when you did that, I'd love to hear your comments on that below. Uh, this is another, the fourth thing that we talked about, creating a desires list. Rhonda talked about this desires list. She wrote down all of her desires and they've all come true. And I just think it's really cool. You know, what if you had a magic pen? You had a magic pen and all you had to do was write down a desire and it would come true. Gosh, how much would you pay for to have a pen that was that magical? Where you, anything you wrote down, it would come true. That's, for me, it's really cool. And it makes me think about this quote from the late, great, Bob Proctor. Bob was on our show a number of times. I felt like he's, he was gone too soon. He brought so much wisdom to the world. If you're a fan of Bob Proctor or watched me interview him a couple of times, leave a comment below for Bob Proctor and the love you had for him. Uh, such a great man that brought so much wisdom to so many people. I'm sad that he is not here with us anymore physically, but I'm so grateful that he left us with words of wisdom. And this is a quote from Bob Proctor. If you see it in your mind, you will hold it in your hand. I, I'm literally getting the chills just saying that and thinking about when he said that to me. If you see it in your mind, you will hold it in your hand. It goes back to what Rhonda was saying here. Imagine you have a magic pen and you write down a desire, a dream, something that you want to create in the world. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. And in my idea, you have the magic pen. You are that magic. If you can write it down and you can imagine it, if you can think about it, you could create it. Now, there might be a, a matter of time when you create that. Maybe it doesn't happen overnight. You have to learn how to move 
within this three-dimensional world or separate yourself into consciousness into the 5D world, which we've talked about with Joe Dispenza in many different interviews. If you want to learn more about that, go check out our interviews with Joe Dispenza. But it's just a matter of maneuvering through space and time with your mind, your energy from your heart, and the connection throughout the world. So again, if you have a pen and you have an imagination, you can think about something and you have a desire, write it down. You don't need to say this publicly to everyone, but write it down and keep it to yourself. Be thinking about the thing you want to create. I love this idea of not limiting yourself because human beings are unlimited and magnificent. And you are unlimited. But a lot of the things that you think, a lot of things that you feel, the energy that you're portraying and your way of being is holding you back. We talk about your thoughts, emotions, and your actions in this kind of mindset in motion. We talk about the process of this in the greatness mindset. If you want to learn more about that as well and how to overcome the thoughts and the emotions that are holding your actions back. There's two different states. You can be in a beautiful state or a suffering state. And if you're in a suffering state, that's the thinking and the feeling of lack, of separation, of less than, of anger, of resentment, of frustration, of doubt and insecurity. Those are all suffering states. It's an energy state that will keep you from creating more, creating more in your relationships, in your health, and in your abundance. And there's a beautiful state that is all about joy, positivity. That's about flow. That's about generosity. That's about acceptance. And when you're in this state of beauty versus suffering, you can create and flow more with the universe and attract more of what you want in your life. Uh, we had a, a guest named Krishna G on here who talked about these two different states. And um, I went to their meditation retreat in India and learned more about this state of being. They're really powerful. And um, again, we can link up some of these things or you can just check them out on our channel here as well. Desire lists, make sure you're writing them down. And again, Bob Proctor, if you see it in your mind, you will hold it in your hand. Powerful quote there. The fifth key uh, that we talked about was gratitude. And this is like something that people say a lot. And you might think this is so simple and such a basic point. But I do not believe I would be where I'm at in my life, emotionally, physically, relationally, business-wise, without being in a constant state of gratitude. Now, a constant might be a, a word that is not true because it's not every single second I am in gratitude. There are definitely moments where I'm frustrated and angry and upset and let down and disappointed and hurt and all these different things. But I am a majority of the time in a state of gratitude. And that has allowed me to have a much more peace, much more flow in my life. I'm being able to go with the ups and downs of life much smoother than being in a state of lack of gratitude. I love this quote from uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer. I'm actually really sad that I never got to meet uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer. I've listened to so many of his lectures. He's got amazing lectures uh, in the Hay House app and also here on YouTube and online and things like that. Um, I've listened to them on repeat, a lot of his books. I really love his messages and just think he was such a, a contributor to humanity and improving the quality of their lives. I really wish I could have interviewed him and met him um, but I'm grateful for the contribution that he made through the content, the books, and the lectures that he's left behind, which are really inspiring. But this was a quote that I love from Dr. Wayne Dyer, who said, be in a state of gratitude for everything that shows up in your life. And that's hard to do, especially if you feel like you're suffering or in lack. Be in a state of gratitude for everything that shows up in your life. Be thankful for the storms as well as the smooth sailing. That's hard when the storm is freaking rocking you over and, you know, you're tipping over and you feel like you're drowning. That's really hard to do. But what Wayne says is, what is the lesson or gift in what you are experiencing right now? Find your joy, not in what's missing in your life, but how you can serve. And Rhonda calls this the fastest way to change your life and shift your vibration is being in a state of gratitude the fastest way to change your life and shift your vibration, your energetic vibration to people around you and to the world. Gratitude, being grateful, 
One of the hardest things that you can do is be grateful when everything is against you. When you feel like your friends are against you, your relationship is against you, no one wants to be with you, you're broke, you're in debt, all the government, the systems, your, your boss, family, parents, everyone is against you. It's one of the hardest things to be grateful for. It's, it's near impossible feeling that you're going to get out of that state, that experience. You feel suffocating. It feels like the world is against you. No one cares about you. I know that feeling. It's a horrible feeling when you're in it. You know, with time, we gain experience, we gain wisdom, and then we have memories. And um, we have this memory bank of things. And we remember the painful moments, the challenging moments, and all these different things. And if you're like me, and you're able to reflect on your life. I think about all the challenging times that I might have experienced, the painful, sad, abandoned, abused times that I felt. And I look back and I'm, and I'm so grateful for them now. It's really hard when you're in that moment to be grateful for what you're experiencing. I don't wish those things would have happened to me, but I'm grateful for the lessons I've learned. I'm not happy of people that hurt me but I'm grateful for the lessons I learned on overcoming that, on learning to forgive, on learning to overcome, on learning to build myself up, on learning to create better boundaries, and all the things that I learned through those challenges and pains. And about five years ago, I was going through a challenging season of life. I was going through something where I was just like, man, this is not fair, and this is unfortunate, and why is this happening to me? And um, a friend of mine who I had on the show Robin Sharma, who's a great author, he, he said, a, a bad day for the ego is a great day for the soul. A bad day for the ego is a great day for the soul. And I remember thinking, man, but this, yeah, it still doesn't feel good though. It's a great, it's a great line, but it didn't feel good. And for whatever reason, in that moment, something opened me up. Again, it was the right person, the right moment, the right season where he said this to me and it made sense. And I started to think internally, oh wow, okay. Let me think about all the bad times for my ego in the past 30 plus years of my life at that time. All those things benefited me to being in a better place after that. You know, maybe it was years later, but it was all those things, the injury, you know, my brother being in jail for four and a half years when I was a kid and not having any friends, my dyslexia, being in special needs classes, being sexually abused, all these different challenges, all these different embarrassing moments, the heartaches and relationships and the breakups and the pain and the sadness and my father passing away and having a tragic brain injury and a car injury and all these different things. And I was just like, man, all these things are in my benefit if I can see the beauty and the blessings in them. And you may not see them in the moment, and I don't think you should spiritually bypass pain and grief and sadness and loss. You've got to feel your range of emotions, but later you can see the benefit behind these things if you express your gratitude. Again, Wayne Dyer says, be thankful for the storms as well as the smooth sailing. Really hard to do. It's one of the hardest things to do is to be grateful for the pain and the challenges and the unfairness that life brings and the, the horrible things that happen in the world. It's really hard to find the good. But I just truly believe that when you are in a state of gratitude, that's when you can make a change around you. That's when you can shift bad things into good things. That's when you can make a difference. That's when you can make an impact. Rhonda calls this the fastest way to change your life and shift our vibration. Being in anger, upset, sadness, and depression, that vibration is a state of suffering. That suffering state makes you suffer from not getting more of the beauty in life. You stay in a suffering state. You attract people that create more suffering. You attract lack. You do not attract abundance from sadness and suffering. And I really want us to, to wrap our heads around this because for a long time, I was in pain and I was driven to create out of pain. I was creating from a state of anger and it got me material results. I made money. I got opportunities. I got acknowledged and made, got awards and all these different things. 
but I was still suffering. I was creating from suffering and anger. And therefore, when I had those things, it almost was more painful because I thought when I have, I will feel better. But I had, and I felt worse. And I created more conflict within myself and others because I thought this should fix things. Taking action from that standpoint did not fix things. It gave me some more money and some more people knew about me and more followers, whatever, but it wasn't making me feel peace and me feel good inside. It wasn't expanding my heart. It was creating from frustration and suffering. And again, that can only get you so far. So we've got to learn to transform it. You can transform it now or you can transform it later, but I encourage you to start gratitude as a daily practice now. The sixth day. If you're enjoying this or you're getting anything out of this, leave a comment below with your biggest takeaway. But the sixth thing that Rhonda talked about is belief. Oh man, belief. What a, what a word. What a word to think about. Um, in The Greatest Mindset, we talk about this idea. And I said in the book, do you know what kills more dreams than anything else on the entire planet? It's self-doubt. So many people fail before they begin simply because they do not believe they can succeed. Again, if you can have it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. If you can write it down, a desire, you can manifest the dream. We have, we have to learn how to believe in self. And I believe self-doubt is the, the biggest killer of dreams. Self-doubt holds us back from so many things. I've seen so many talented people who are skilled beyond belief, who had years of education and experience, still not believe they were capable, still afraid when the moment came and they had to take action and they crumbled under the pressure. We've got to learn how to develop self-belief and uh, changing our belief around about ways money can come into our lives is one thing as well. Rhonda says that one of the main beliefs that blocks money is that it can only come through our jobs. That is limited. There are other ways that money can come to you. There are other things that you can create beyond your career or your business where you can manifest more money. So we have to not be limited by our thinking around money as well and our belief around it as well. Uh, also talks about this belief that we need to suffer in order to make money um, or that we are destined to not have enough based on the situation we're born into, right? This belief that, well, because my parents didn't have much, I can't have much. Or because um, the only way for me to make more money is if I truly suffer and I sacrifice everything else in my life. I actually don't think that's the best way to think about it or to live because if you are sacrificing your health for money, then you're just doing a big disservice to yourself and everyone else around you by saying, this is my master. This is what I value most. Money over health, money over relationships, money over being kind to self, money over you know, being a generous human being. So we've gotta be thinking about, again, money will flow when you get the other things right in your life as well. When you take care of your health, when you're generous, when you're kind, when you say yes, to fears and you're courageous and you act on them, the universe starts saying, okay, you're taking these actions, let's create more opportunities for you. Now you have to say yes to these opportunities. You have to put in the work and the time to make that money in certain ways. You've got to develop skills. I'm not saying you're going to bypass all these things, but it doesn't have to feel like you're suffering or you're sacrificing your life to make more money. And that's the way it has to be. You just got to get an alignment with what you want and alignment with your desires and your dreams and make sure you're saying yes and being in alignment, working and collaborating with the people in your life who are also wanting those same things. So you got to think about where you're at and what is out of alignment. Are you out of alignment with yourself? Are you discounting yourself? Are you not showing up to your commitments and to your word? Are you not believing you're worthy? then you're going to put yourself in situations and relationships and career and business opportunities and business partnerships that are being out of alignment, that are going to abuse, abandon, or, or take advantage of you. So we've got to get alignment with self first. You've got to get alignment with your dreams. 
Are your dreams to be a millionaire to show off and impress the kids that picked on you when you were younger? Well, then you're going to go make a lot of money, but you're going to be very unhappy doing that because you're doing it from a state, an energetic flow that is not generous. It's to prove wrong. It's to make your ego feel good. So we've got to think about the alignments in life that will support you in actually feeling this sense of belief that you're deserving and all these other things and attracting and manifesting more money. So I would love to hear your thoughts on what you learned from this interview in this episode. What did, what did you hear from my takeaway that was unique or a reminder for you? What did you hear from Rhonda and what she shared? And also, if you want Rhonda to come back on, make sure to say yes, bring Rhonda back on so she sees this and she wants to come share even more of her wisdom. Again, this is her first sit down interview and in I think over 10 years since Oprah, which is really cool. And if you want more of these minds and these leaders around the world who have created incredible work or art or businesses or music, sports, if you want the top minds in the world to come on and reveal these things, then make sure to click the subscribe button right now. Follow us over on Apple and Spotify podcast because the bigger we grow, the more we can reach and impact people and the more we can get great minds to come on and share this wisdom with you. Again, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you again. Leave a comment, click subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Grateful isn't spiritual or, you know, it's just being grateful. And I, I just, if you want to see the power that you have to change your life really fast, then start doing gratitude and it will just blow your mind. It changes everything.